वेलकम एवरी बर्न वेलकम एवरीबडी प्लीज जस्ट गिव मे थम्स अप और इन द चार्ट जस्ट टाइप इन येस एल्फाबेट इफ आई एम विजिबल एंड ऑडिबल so this is going to be the last episode in this particular series that is the fmg pre- uh, previous year question series which uh, we have started since 10 days last 10 days every day at 10 o'clock uh, i guess there is no any issues with the audio or video just type in letter s in the chat section if both my audio and video are working fine or just give a like to this video so today we are going to look at skin tumors topic and also some miscellaneous uh, previous year questions which were asked in the fmg exam i guess the audio and video are working just fine so those students who are watching me for the first time on youtube video this is myself for dr madhuri shinwa certified dermatologist from india discussing derma related topics in my youtube channel and this series we are precisely looking at the previous year questions of uh, foreign medical graduate examination fmg exam and my vision and uh, mission are to help the prep students and also dermatology residents to you know understand uh, and easily uh, answer any kind of mcq based questions or even uh, you know long answer question short answer question of university exams in the future that is also upcoming so these are my vision and mission and success consists of going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm so <clears throat> the enthu should burn within 24 by 7 this is uh, the most important thing uh, you can remember from the words of winston churchill and always you should think that i can do it failures are going to come in between they are the stepping stones over which you are going to place your uh you today's steps to reach the tomorrow's success okay so <clears throat> let us you know start the questions very quickly real quickly type in in the chat section question number 1 this is a question number 1 followed by whatever answer you feel is correct for this question and we are going to have a timer here for uh, 30 seconds and your time starts now please try to post your answer in the chat section yes very good uh, lavanya you are with the right answer it is option a that is malignant melanoma it is indeed malignant melanoma okay so now let us look at the next question question number 2 so this is question number 2 and your time starts now uh yes i guess i am not coming in the way yes rajay you are also right for the previous question and this was another question which was asked uh, related to skin cancers skin tumors what do you feel is the answer for this question your time is up 30 seconds and the answer for this question question number 2 is squamous cell carcinoma okay <clears throat> so lavanya very good and arman ansari uh, it's okay no not a big deal but please make a note in the future do not make a mistake out of uh, this question if it is repeated why because repeat questions are very very precious and this is question number 3 and your time starts now please try to answer in the chat section with 
3 followed by your option which you, are, you feel is the right answer for this question. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I got uh, answer from two students as option B and very good I got three answers and yes the time is up and very good all of you have marked it right it is basal cell carcinoma BCC which is the answer in this question. Okay let us go to the question number four this is question number four your time starts now. Identify this image identify this image what do you feel is the <coughs> is this image. and your time is up okay very good arman and sari is the right answer it is keloid it is a keloid very very important image based question and this is the question number five please try to post your answer your time starts now related to keloid which is the false statement among the given options <clears throat> and your time is up okay so the answer for this question is option c option c very good raja you have marked it right so keloid does not subside over time okay indeed it may even uh, increase and encroach onto the normal looking surrounding skin but it will not heal by itself so this is uh, question number six and 10 seconds is more than sufficient for this question. So, you are having 5 more seconds. Most common set of angioedema is. And the time is up. And if you have marked it as option A, then you are absolutely correct. Sixth question answer is option A. So, this is question number 7. And for this question, we can have 20 seconds. Angioedema is characterized by swelling of. So these are memory based questions, there is no any rocket sense in these type of questions. All you need to do is just remember what is the concept and try to answer it based upon the memory. And your time is up. The answer for this question number 7 is subcutaneous tissues, subcutaneous tissues. Okay, very 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 important. This is question number 8. Derriere sign is seen in. What do you think is the answer for this question? Question number 8. Well done, Rajay Lavanya. You have marked it as uh, option A. Very good. And this is question number 8. Please try to post your answer. Derriere sign is seen in. These kind of questions in the final exam, they are going to be your, uh, you know, confusers. We can say in the exam stress, suddenly you might answer that it is Darius disease, which probably can be the most common wrong answer. But if you have marked it as option C, urticaria pigmentosa, very, very good, then you are absolutely right. Very good, Raja and Lavanya, you have both marked it right. So this is question number 9. Please guess what is the answer for this question. <clears throat> These kind of, we can say clinical based questions uh, uh, may be seen, but not entire paper is, cannot be this kind of uh, uh, clinical based uh, scenario type of questions. But yes, you can find these in the uh, real exam also. So you should be practicing this kind of slightly lengthy questions also while you are doing your grant test and i hope all of you might have answered it as option 
option B. Okay, so this is a question for which the answer is option B that is after ulcers. Okay, please remember this is very important. So this is question number 10 pathology test. This 10 seconds is more than sufficient. This is a memory based. So even without the options, you should be in a position to remember what is the answer for this question based upon the you know previous years questions and if you are marked it as Bechet's disease if you are marked it as Bechet's disease your answer is absolutely correct okay option c that is Bechet's disease and you need to identify this instrument what do you feel is this instrument so 15 seconds is the time which is more than sufficient for this question so 10 seconds are up another 5 more seconds so question number 11 what do you think is this the time is up and if you have marked it as humby's knife humby's knife then you are absolutely correct and this is probably the last question of our entire series so we shall have some 20 seconds for this question number 12 sunscreen lotion has so what do you think out of the given options will a sunscreen have question number 12 very good lavanya raje uh, uh, sharma all of you marked it right so this is the question for which i want the answer question number 12 what do you feel is the answer 12 followed by your answer and if you have marked it as option d then you are absolutely correct it is zinc oxide which is present in the sunscreen lotion very very well done okay all of you have marked it right i am very happy for that and i hope all of you enjoyed this previous year questions you know question answer pattern if so please do give a like to this video okay so and i wish all the students who have watched till this point uh, a great success and uh, i hope you are also going to give this kind of very very happy remarks or we can say <laughs> very very happy thoughts post the exam and post the results and i wish all of you are going to see these four letters in the result of your fmg exam p a s s uh, we can say these four letters are gold for all of you and i wish all of you are going to get this gold uh, once the results are announced and come back please come back to my youtube channel do remember me for taking dermatology related uh, previous year questions in my youtube channel dr madhuran shinos is my name and try to post these kind of uh, you know comments in the videos after the results are announced okay so now let us you know those students who want to leave uh, this session for revising uh, your notes or whatever other subjects please check out the links in the description and join my telegram and instagram uh, and you can ask any dermatology related queries if you are having before this exam okay and the links are there in the description okay now let us very quickly really quickly look at what are the uh, you know explanations so, okay one or two points about all these questions we are going to look at the explanations and uh, we are going to call it a day and if you see this question this is the question number one which we have seen the answer for which was malignant melanoma so in this what you are able to see is over the left cheek you are able to observe some blackish discoloration is present some blackish discoloration is present and we can say this is a patch which is present here a hyperpigmented patch and you are able to notice that this is fulfilling the a b c d e this is fulfilling the a b c d there is some asymmetry in this lesion so a is there and the borders are irregular they are irregular here yes and the color if you observe carefully the color in few areas it is relatively slightly pigmented and in other areas it is very very intensely pigmented so color is also satisfied and diameter is definitely more than six millimeters and evolution you can uh, this is not mentioned in the question so in the question they can mention suddenly some hyperpigmented lesion which was present over the face it is increasing in size or increase it is becoming more intense so that will be related to the evolutionary changes so if these features are satisfied then the answer always should be malignant melanoma and this in itself was one of the neat exam a b c d criteria are used for the diagnosis of which skin cancer it is malignant melanoma very very important for you to remember 
and this is the uh, we can say uh, first time it was asked and you need to know that whenever the keratin whenever the keratin is present in the nails nail plate it is going to be very hard whereas in the skin the keratin will be very very soft it will be very soft but over the skin sometimes the keratin can get accumulated and it uh, will uh, grow out grow from the skin surface in the form of, you know just like which happens in the animals as hooves and horns so like that it may outgrow and these are called as cutaneous horns and very very important is whenever we get this kind of a patients always we should do a excisional biopsy so we must perform a excisional biopsy of this lesion excisional biopsy of this lesion and we should send this uh, entire lesion to for histopathological examination why because it was observed that at the base of this cutaneous horn there can be there can be uh, human papilloma virus which can produce this cutaneous horn or dreaded uh, you know underlying cause may be squamous cell carcinoma which can be present at the base of this cutaneous horn so at this base there can be human papilloma virus or there can be even squamous cell carcinoma so we should excise this entire lesion send for histopathological examination and make sure that there is no any squamous cell carcinoma at the base of uh, this cutaneous horn and this is very very classical picture i can tell you uh, elderly woman 60 year old lady is elderly woman okay coming with the complaints of this lesion if you observe this lesion carefully it is appearing very very translucent as uh, pearly white nature is there and you are able to see one more feature that there are dilated blood vessels dilated blood vessels are called as telangiectasias So whenever you get to see this kind of a picture, you should think about basal cell carcinoma. So it is basal cell carcinoma, which is diagnosis here. And if you get to see, uh, if you happen to see this kind of a picture where this, there is a outgrowth of the skin and not only that hyper uh, proliferation of the skin, along with that, if you are able to observe this crab like extinctions onto the normal looking skin this crab like extinctions onto the normal looking skin and uh, this in the question they can also mention that there was some history of trauma or they need not be a mention of trauma why because keloid scan occurs spontaneously also and yeah so i have already told you the answer it is keloid in this particular case which is the diagnosis here and related to keloid Please remember few important points. Keloids can be familial and they are most commonly found on the sternum. And yes, the keloids can have this hyperkeratotic nature in the lesion. But option C is wrong here. Keloids are not going to subside over time. And in fact, they can even encroach onto the normal looking skin and they can increase in size even further. Okay. So option C is wrong statement related to the keloid and you must also remember that in the keloids we are going to give intralesional steroids ILS stands for intralesional so into the lesion we are going to give steroids we are going to give the steroids and can anyone tell me what is that steroid which we prefer to give uh, uh, for ILS in the patients of keloids or hypertrophic scars. So yes, just in the comment section, please uh, type what is that steroid which is preferred to be given as injection that is ILS. Yes, anybody? Is it prednisolone or is it dexamethasone or is it betamethasone? What do you think is uh, the steroid which is given intralationally? Yes, anybody? It is triamcinolone. It is triamcinolone. Okay, just remember this point. Very, very important. This could be asked in the future as MCQ. And just remember that in the basics uh, class, we have seen that, see, if uh, the subcutaneous tissue is having a uh, inflammation, we call it as paniculitis. I hope you do remember this. So, a subcutaneous tissue, if there is an inflammation, very good, Raja, you have marked it right. Uh, you have, you know, answered it right as transylone. Very good. If there is inflammation of the subcutaneous tissue, we call it as paniculitis. 
if there is a fluid accumulation in the subcutaneous tissue we call it as angioedema and one more thing which you must remember is if the infection in the skin spreads to the subcutaneous uh, tissue then we are going to call it as cellulitis cellulitis okay these are the three terms which you must uh, remember related to the subcutaneous tissue which is also called as hypodermis which is also called as panniculus okay so if there is fluid accumulation in the subcutaneous tissue we call it as angioedema and if there is infection if there is infection staff or strip in the subcutaneous tissue we call it as cellulitis and if there is inflammation inflammatory cell uh, cells if they are present in the subcutaneous tissue we call it as paniculitis okay please remember these three terms very very important and in the angioedema there is basically c1 s2 is inhibitor deficiency which is the problem here one second okay c1 s2 is inhibitor deficiency is the basic problem And the most common site where we can see the edema is lips. And I hope you might remember this movie of uh, Will Smith in which uh, he has some seafood uh, followed by which there is going to be a, a reaction whereby it was shown that his eyes will become swollen and uh, lips will become swollen. So this is basically angioedema. How does it present? Okay. And the most common site is lips very very important for you to remember this point and next question is derrier sign very very important which is seen positive in urticaria pigmentosa can anybody tell me what is other name for urticaria pigmentosa anybody urticaria pigmentosa it is having another name it is also called as yes anybody come on quickly i will just give 10 seconds of time and uh, uh, i hope that you can answer in the chat section what is the name of urticaria pigmentosa And if you have marked it as masto, if you have, uh, you know, answered it as mastocytosis. There is slight delay, I guess, in the live and in this thing. Okay, but whatever, it, if you have, if you have uh, answered it as mastocytosis, excellent. Okay, so basically in this, in the childhood, over the trunk, over the trunk, children are going to have hyperpigmented macules and patches because of the underlying mast cell proliferation this hyperpigmentation can be seen over the skin and if we scratch these lesions with a blunt object then what happens is the the, the mast cells they are going to release a histamine because of which there is going to be erythema and urticarial halo which will be produced over the you know site whichever we stroke and this is what is this is what is called as derrier sign derrier sign that is we scratch the lesion there will be histamine release from the mast cells and there is going to be development of erythema and beals okay and this is what is called as a derrier sign please remember this derrier sign has nothing to do with the derrier's disease that is one thing which you must remember okay and this is the classical description of an afters ulcer very very important that is recurrent mouth ulcers which are round yellowish elevated uh, and they are surrounded by an erythematous halo and these ulcers after ulcers are going to heal within 7 to 10 days this is a classical description for an after ulcer okay and you can see here this is the minor after ulcer which is present over the lateral aspect of the tongue and you can see the description here the solitary ulcer is covered by yellow proteinaceous debris and it is marginated it is marginated or we can say it is surrounded by a erythematous halo this is the classical description of a aphthous ulcer very very important and just remember that aphthous ulcers are of three types minor aphthous ulcer major aphthous ulcers and herpetic aphthous ulcers minor they are also called as mikulic ulcers okay just remember these points mi is mi here minor or called as mikulic ulcer and this is in fact the most common type of aphthous ulcers and where we are going to get these ulcers which will be roughly 1 to 6 in number less than 1 centimeter in diameter and they are going to heal within 7 to 10 days so in the question uh, you know whatever was asked was related to this minor aphthous ulcers 
followed by major of the sulcer which are also called as sutton sulcers and these are certainly going to have more than 1 cm diameter and they are very very slow to heal and they are going to leave behind very bad scarring okay why because they are slightly larger uh, ulcers and now comes herpetiform ulcers so here uh, the ulcers are going to be uh, in huge numbers ranging from 10 to 100 and uh, these small small ulcers which are more in number they can coalesce together and they can form large ulcers okay they can form large ulcers and pathology test it is seen in Bechet's disease few points about Bechet's disease so this we can also remember it as Bechet's syndrome in this interestingly we can see two uh, important things that is major criteria and minor criteria so in the major criteria if you look carefully the patients will have history of recurrent oral ulcerations so in the previous question in the previous question the clinical based question if uh, any of the points of the minor criteria of Bechet's are added then the answer for this question will turn out to become Bechet's disease or Bechet's syndrome so you need to make sure that you will read the question very very carefully for any additional point that is minor criteria which are mentioned in the question and what are the minor criteria so along with the recurrent oral ulcerations which can be more than three episodes in a year there can be a mention of eye involvement eye uh, eyes are looking red or they can be mentioned of uveitis or retinitis or uh, you know conjunctivitis anything will, will be given as a clue or there can be mention of genital ulcerations they can be mentioned of genital ulcerations or there can be additional skin lesions which can also be given that is erythema nodosum like lesions can be mentioned or pimples that is acne form nodules can also be there in the patients and of course ultimately our question that is pathology test will be positive in this patient so you can see these are the you know uh, recurrent recurrence will be given in the question but yes these are uh, oral ulceration which you are able to see over the palate and these are the uh, you know genital ulcerations which are very uh, characteristically present over the scrotum in the patients of Bechet syndrome uh, and in this uh, case these this patient also had conjunctivitis and yes erythema nodosum like lesions were also present so finally to confirm this or to uh, strengthen the diagnosis what we can do is a pathology test in which we are going to take a sterile needle sterile needle we uh, there is no need to take any uh, saline or any other liquid just take a sterile needle mark area over the left forearm and give a prick sterile prick over the left forearm and call the patients uh, after two days after 48 hours and examine the area where we have given a prick and if this site develops a pustule if this site develops a pustule if then we can say pathology test is positive and pathology test is positive in this case that is Bechet syndrome and not only Bechet syndrome you must remember that one more condition which is called as pyoderma gangrenosum So even in this condition also pathology test can be positive okay very very important and this is the instrument most likely you might have seen in the surgery postings or in the plastic surgery postings while performing a skin graft to take the skin graft from the donor side this uh, uh, is Humbi's knife is what is used to take the skin graft to place it over the recipient side okay. And finally, this question sunscreen lotion. Sunscreens are of two types for your kind information. They can be chemical sunscreens or they can be physical sunscreens. So, chemical sunscreens, there are many in the store, in the market out there. But physical sunscreen, there are only two physical sunscreens which are you should remember. Zinc oxide, which was given in this question, is one of them, and titanium dioxide is the another one. So, these are the two physical sunscreens which are used. So basically, if you remember the cricketers during the test matches most likely they will wear some whitish stuff over the face so you might be wondering what is that that is nothing but the physical sunscreen which can be titanium dioxide or zinc oxide and the function of this uh, you know uh, white color coating over the face is to block the sun physically literally the rays will fall over that 
and it will get reflected okay so that is how the physical sunscreens work whereas chemical sunscreens uh, they are many of them so you need not remember all these names just remember avobenzone octinoxate so these are the two important ones avobenzone and octinoxate so the uh, function the mechanism of the chemical sunscreen is they will go deep inside the skin they, uh, and whenever light falls over the skin what they will do is they will take up all the energy from the light and they will prevent any unnecessary uh, you know damage to the uh, cells which are native to the skin okay that is the mechanism of chemical sunscreens and this uh, was about the explanation part related to the miscellaneous and also the tumors i hope all of you enjoyed this session if so please give this video a like and also do share this among your friends and uh, join my telegram group for any queries related to dermatology from mcq point of view and also any help any kind of help uh, related to dermatology okay and the links are there in the description you can check the description for all these links for telegram group or whatsapp uh, you know group and that's it we can say that this uh, pre previous year question series one is concluded for fmg students now uh, you might be wondering what is going to happen from tomorrow then uh, for all of you are good news so we are going to have live sessions uh, we are going to look at the uh, important questions which can be asked in the neat exam from uh, tomorrow or day after tomorrow i will announce that in the telegram group so we are going to have uh, the important questions uh, topic wise just like this topic wise we are going to divide it and we are going to discuss every day at 10 o'clock as test and discussion so first 15 to 20 minutes it will be only question answer question answer uh, where you will get to know what are the answers for the questions and later on after all the questions are completed we are going to look at the answers and explanations briefly uh, so you can put your you know questions which you feel are difficult from any platform marrow prep ladder unacademy uh, you name it you can uh, take that question how much ever wrong silly mistake that question may be having so you can put that and you can dm me or you can put uh, a, that question in the telegram group and you can ask me to discuss this question uh, depending upon the topic topic wise i uh, on these particular dates i will post that question and we shall have a slight small uh, you know explanation to uh, unveil any difficulties or any controversies uh, related to the different kinds of apps and their answers okay so i hope it's a great deal uh, if uh, you like this you know concept of test and discussion uh, and mind you this is going to continue so till the neat exam which can be most likely in the march or we don't know uh, only god knows and nb knows and uh, maybe court also knows when the exam will happen but as of now consider march 12th as the exam date and uh, make sure that your preparation is centered around that date uh, if anything happens and if the exam gets postponed then it is a additional time for your revisions okay that should be your mindset otherwise uh, the final date is march 12th uh, for the neat exam and uh, coming to the fmg exam so right now we are having uh, literally uh, we can say 10 days of time is there that is almost uh, uh, we are very close to getting a single digit dates for the exam so what my suggestion for all the fmg you know aspirants is right now is the time to read all the most important topics from the subjects and also all the volatile topics take all the notes make sure that you are revising you are revising all the volatile topics why because uh, these are the topics which will repeat again and again year after year session after session but if you don't revise them in the exam you will you know uh, you will want to check out the nearby wall and try to uh, bash your head onto that wall for array mene isko kyu chhod diya why did i leave this endu kodile sanra babu this are these are the thoughts which you should not get in the exam why because that one question which you feel like this may you know 
ruin the rest of the paper so to prevent this from happening what i want all of you to do is do revise the previous year questions of fmg not only of dermatology of course dermatology we have you know covered all the questions all the questions are completed and other uh, subjects so this is my sincere request for all of you other subjects please do all the previous year questions and apart from that if you complete all of them also do the neat previous year questions of at least 2 to 3 years and also aims and inct at least 2 to 3 years if possible apart from fmg also do these questions if time permits okay why because these questions and these concepts okay the questions may not be repeated uh, you know uh, copy paste but definitely concepts are the hot topics which are actually very hot in the market so there is every possibility the examiner will again ask the same question or same topic okay so always make sure that you will not miss out you will not uh, 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 completely uh, forget to revise the most important of the topics from all the subjects okay and if you wish to uh, if you wish to watch my uh, previous questions of aims uh, you can check out the playlist is there in the description you can check out the playlist uh, for the previous questions of aims and inct uh, in that playlist okay and uh, any queries any suggestions uh, any feedbacks which you want to give you can post it in the chat section we are going to be live for one more minute and then we'll call it a day you can go back and revise whatever you are reading and remember if you had failures in the past that was past and don't bring your past into the present and don't ruin your future based upon your past uh, you know performances that was past that was past uh, you know efforts which may be less than the efforts which you are putting right now uh, and most importantly from the previous failures please uh, uh, learn from the previous mistakes the lessons that may be in the final you know one or two weeks what mistake you have made in the previous session don't try to repeat that that is if you are not taken the grantest now i would urge you to take some grantest and make yourself acquainted with sitting for so many hours in the exam that is it in itself a herculean task i can say that definitely why because it is very difficult to sit for so so long okay uh, without both physical and also mental uh, you know thought block sitting for so many hours is a great task and yes do grant us do uh, try to uh, look at the answers explanation post the grant test and do not worry about the scores if they are not so good uh, you are still going to have the chance till the exam is completed so till then every minute every second is very precious so make sure that you are going to use every moment of your preparation till the exam and uh, thank you so much friends for all the patient listening and active participation So, if you are not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, uh, so this is the call for all of you. Do subscribe so that you will get all the latest updates of the videos which are going to post. And do like this video and do share this among your friends, colleagues, seniors, juniors, whoever might get benefited by these videos. And uh, also, if you have uh, any queries related to Dermatol, you can reach me out. I am very easily available on Telegram. Okay. So, myself, Dr. Madhuri Shinva, Certified Dermatologist from India, discussing dermal-related topics. And uh, I thank you so much for uh, all your uh, patient listening. Sarvam Sri Krishna Arpanam Sarve Jana Sukino Bhavantu. Thank you so much. Happy learning dermatology, friends. Bye-bye. Good night. Let us meet again in the upcoming videos.